So what is in Scilly you perform? Much like UPK, UPerform allows you to create, store, and manage multiple assets from a single authoring session. These assets include simulations, cue cards, quick reference guides, training guides, testing assets, and more. You also have the ability here to create true e-learning courses for use in the classroom or with computer-based training. UPerform also provides robust analytics, reporting, and content management capabilities compared to UPK. When comparing the two platforms functionally, keep in mind that around three years ago, I would have considered UPK and UPerform like Coke and Pepsi. The difference began when Oracle started shifting resources and commitment elsewhere, and Siley remained focused on the UPerform platform and continually works to enhance it. In addition to you, the features that UPK gave you, with UPerform you get the ability to create true e-learning courseware, built-in text-to-speech capabilities, additional languages to support global rollouts, an end-user website portal, robust task management and workflow capabilities, as well as an enhanced reporting and analytics. Key features of the UPerform platform. Coming from working with UPK, many of these will look familiar. Keep in mind, this will ease the transition in any associated learning curve when the time comes to make the move from UPK. As you'll see, you perform content build and management is project role and task based. Project roles provide structure you need for successful content management and the flexibility to tailor your content creation and maintenance processes. There are five main roles in you perform. Keep in mind that more than one role can be assigned to a single person. The system administrator is the top level. They're the one that's going to come in, create projects, configure administration settings, and perform system related tasks. Project administrators create and manage project templates, folders, workflows, document libraries, and end-user websites. Publishing administrators managing, manage the publishing process, which nicely can be set up on batch or even automated using workflow. Glossary administrators manage the glossary, including adding and editing terms, as well as approving and rejecting suggested definitions. Finally, content authors are your development staff. These are the folks that are going to come in, create, edit, in the client and view content in the document library. They can initiate approval workflows, perform content reviews, assign website context, and participate in author discussions. UPerform provides robust features with regards to administration, such as managing projects, templates, recording profiles, content releases, workflow, discussions, feedback, and retention periods. You also have the ability to create custom dashboards and reports, which makes tracking simple. With the continuous and forced adoption models that Oracle is implementing recently with many of their applications, content maintenance has become even more important and challenging. UPerform's documentation change impact reporting capability gives you an easy way to determine which content has been or will be impacted when changes occur. For example, if you know a particular page in your application is changing, you can simply search by that page ID within the UPerform administration site, and UPerform will provide you with a report with all of the assets that will be affected, allowing you to track what needs to be updated. The Rapid Recorder is UPerform's parallel to the UPK Recorded tool. The, the difference on this side is what you'll see when I demo, is that these recordings are task-based, allowing administrators to monitor if the development efforts are on track and where adjustments may need to be made to keep things on schedule. Again, just like UPK, this requires little to no training, can be used by anyone in your organization, and works with virtually all Microsoft Windows and web-based applications. The UPerform client is much like the UPK developer client, but with a different layout and some different functionality. One nice feature is you have the ability in the client to toggle between simulation and document views and make edits of the one-to-one -one relationship as opposed to editing documentation after publishing. Edits made here, um, edits are made here rather, and then content is checked into the database. Um, also, everything is template driven within UPerform, and this greatly simplifies editing and maintaining content. Everything uh, uh, that's all set up you know, before you get into the development process um, is done for you, and then uh, this allows you then to say rebrand content for another uh, purpose if you say you have another business unit or something is going to deploy with a different look and feel. These things can happen right on the fly. The UPerform Collaboration Database is your central repository for all your development assets. Um, UPerform content is checked in here and then managed and published as desires. Administrators use this site to manage templates, reporting, analytics, 
and batch publish as well as assign task and website context. Unlike UPK, Ubiform allows you to batch publish content to the end user website. You simply select the content and add it to a publishing queue and you can continue working on other items. This process can also be automated through workflow so that anyone on your staff is not going to lose any time and productivity with regards to publishing. As you know in UPK, when you're publishing large, say, in-application support outlines, this could lock down your machine for hours at a time. Authors have the ability to come in here to view tasks, alerts, workflow and reports, as well as participate in any workflow or discussions. When recording content, UPerform automatically will pick up terms and context that it feels may be important. The UPerform glossary database is where these terms are managed. Authors can use this site to suggest new terms and definitions, and administrators can manage and eventually publish these terms and associated definitions when the time comes. The end user website. This is a delivered web portal where users can quickly access published assets including simulations, documents, and e-learning courses. This is comparative to the UPK Knowledge Center Professional, but here your knowledge paths would instead be built out as e-learning courses and there's a lot more functionality built in. Um, for our final poll question, uh, please let us know, are you currently using UPK Knowledge Center? So when it comes to simulations, UPerform comes delivered with four player simulation modes. Sounds familiar, right? Auto playback is much like see it mode in UPK, and standard playback is just like try it. Um, the difference lies with self-test and assessment modes. These work kind of like UPK know it mode, but self-test is used more for practice or in lieu of training environments for instructor-led training. The assessment mode sims are, are graded and can be used on their own or as part of an assessment and as an, part of an e-learning course. Documentation outputs with UPerform include key cards with, or cue cards rather, which are HTML-based job aids, quick reference guides that can be downloaded or printed, student guides, work instructions, along with testing assets. The e-learning course capability is a feature that is available on UPerform that was not there with UPK. This platform gives the ability to take all of those assets you've created and combine into true e-learning courseware. This can include conceptual information, PowerPoint slides, images and flows, videos, embedded simulation, as well as written or interactive knowledge checks and assessments. Like UPK, content can be embedded into your application's help menu. The difference with UPerform is here you can provide multiple forms of support that appeal to the different styles of adult learning right at their moment of need, including those cue cards, simulations, and guided help. The UPerform re-record tool allows you to make updates to content effectively just like the parallel in UPK. It's almost apples to apples. Now let's take a tour of some of the uh, things related to content creation and management. Um, as well as take a look at some uh, published outputs. Okay, so here you see on my uh, screen here, I have the Ansali U Perform Rapid Recorder up. Um, as you'll notice, things are task-based, so the, my administrator has assigned a task to me to create employee self-service uh, topics. And you see a due date is set here. Once I'm ready, all I have to do is simply click record. And you'll notice my Rapid Recorder window opens. I have the, ability, the difference here with the wrapper recorder compared to the record it tool with UPK is although it automatically records, I can start and stop my recording as well as make edits on the fly, like simply undo things. I have the capability to add notes or I could turn on audio and I could simply talk to this as I go, which is very helpful to the uh, development staff because then they can maybe capture in one shot anything that's inclusive with regards to your business processes and so forth. So I'm going to record a quick topic here uh, in the Oracle Cloud. One second. All right. So when I'm ready, I'm simply just going to click record. It's telling me that I'm recording, so I'm going to navigate. See, so noticing it's picking up what I'm doing automatically, which is much like EPK. And for this topic, I'm just going to assume that I uh, had a recent move. So I'm going to edit my address you'll notice that it is picking up everything that I do within the uh, in the application. When I'm finished, all I do is I hit stop. 
and it'll ask me, do I like, do I want to check in the task at this time? For this example, I'm just going to click yes. So what this is doing now is checking that topic that I recorded into the uh, collaboration database. So at this point, I could come into my, as a development developer rather, I could pick this up by simply coming in and doing a file open from server. I could pick that up and then make all my edits. For this demo purposes, I'm just going to show you what a topic looks like once it's, uh, once it's done being edited. You'll notice here the layout inside of the uh, developer client is a little different than UPK. The save frames per se are on the left side up and down and your contents on the right so you can kind of toggle between things. Uh, what you'll notice here right out of the gate is you have the ability in UPerform to have multiple bubbles on the screen which uh, you had to use the overlay tool in UPK to do. What you can do with this is really nice is I can set a timing to this bubble say for five seconds to show this will pop up on the screen with nothing else and then say this one will pop up for three seconds. So it's really nice when doing your like um, auto playback or see it mode. You also have the ability to add different types of bubbles. This uh, gray one here represents our happy path if you will for the um, self test or assessment modes because you have to give the user um, a certain way to do things because as you know within each application there's multiple ways to get to the same place. Uh, as I mentioned previously, one of the really nice things is I can click over to this document tab and this will display the document format for me right here live in the editor. So I have the ability to come in and add a, you know, additions here. I can add and remove screenshots, everything right here on the fly. Um, you'll notice here are some examples of where it picked up context. It's saying, it says, is the area code field um, important? So it says, is this required, optional, conditional? For this one, it says required, and you give an example. So this is where you can suggest the definitions to the glossary editor and so forth. But as I mentioned, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. Once I'm finished with all my edits here, I would simply check this into the server, and then the administrator could then, or publishing administrator could publish it out to their end user website for, say, content reviews and so forth, and once we're finished for actual consumption. So let's pick that up there. So if I come in here, this is the, um, the collaboration database where I'm inside of the project for the Oracle Fusion. And here is the example of the topic, updating personal information. I come in here and this is where I could assign website contact, meaning like where on the end user website do I want this to live? Where do I want it to publish to? You see I have it selected here for the document library. When I'm ready to publish, this is what's really nice with Uperform. I simply would just click this and add to the publishing queue, and it's going to publish in the background, meaning me as an administrator or developer, I don't have to spend any time sitting and waiting while the system publishes. And like I mentioned, if you set up workflow, you can actually automate that entire process. Okay, let me see here. So now, say the content was published out for consumption. Here's the uh, end user website. You'll notice I have an ability to come in. I can manage glossary terms, things like that. Different projects are assigned to me. But let's take a look at some of the uh, published outputs here. So you'll see I have a document library and training courses. So let's uh, take a look at document library. And let's look at this entering time, for example. So here's an example of a cue card. Uh, as I mentioned, cue cards are HTML based, meaning that I can have the ability to quickly, I can show and hide screenshots if, you know, if I want to take a look at things. So it gives you a nice option, uh, simplified or as really detailed as you want here. Work instructions are very similar, but these are able to be downloaded or printed as needed as if someone, say, wants a, a desktop guide. Same thing here with quick references and your steps. and um, and then you have obviously your simulation modes. So as I mentioned, I have a feeling we're gonna get talk to text here. I'm gonna have to turn that off quickly. That is the delivered uh, hazel voice, which is a um, Australian or British accent. As you'll notice here, it's gonna progress. I'm gonna sit back just like see it mode and watch a movie here. Um, and you can set the timings and everything. You can restore the steps here, which show me uh, everything so I can kind of navigate through and so forth. The standard tutorial is like, as I mentioned, is much like UPK CM or uh, try it mode. So here I could come in and it's going to progress through it, but it's not going to advance unless I click. So same thing here. I'm going to click the time button. It's going to tell me some information. And then now notice here, drag and drops are really nice with you perform. Um, whereas UPK, they were kind of clunky. This allows me to actually drag and drop where I want it to go. And it, uh, it feels very intuitive. 
comparative to what we used to do in the past with UPK. Um, Self-test is exactly like, like I mentioned where you come in and you can provide practice. It can, this can be used in lieu of an actual training environment. And there, here's the happy path as I mentioned because um, obviously I could have clicked the navigator as opposed to na about me and still got to the same place. But for this example, I click about me. It's making me think about this a little more. Where is it on the screen? Um, where is the time button? It's that next building block associated with learning. So as I go through here, it's going to prompt me. And then it's just, it's just practice. And the assessment is just like it sounds. It's scored. It can be added to an e-learning course and so forth. Um, guided help is uh, you performs version of, you know, for in-application support. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here I'm going to log into my PeopleSoft instance. So say I'm in here, I'm an end user, I'm going to create my expense report for the month. And I went to training a couple weeks ago and you know, just like studies show, you now two weeks later I've forgotten approximately 80% of what I learned in that class. So I come here and I go, what do I do? So all I would do here is I would hit help. And you perform automatically searches for context and pulls up context sensitive help. The difference that you'll notice here is the different formats that are available to me. As opposed to UPK, you would just get the do it mode or just the job aid. I have the ability to use the, the cue card if I want. That, like I say, I can show all the screenshots, whatever I need here, or I can, you know, go a quick reference that I can print. I can actually access the simulations or the guided help. So guided help is like do it mode with UPK. It floats on top and you'll see here now, you know, I can progress through, I can say, oh, that's where I need to go. I need to go down to the attachment button. So you can skip around in here, it'll play automatically and so forth. So like I mentioned, you perform gives you multiple avenues for, for just in time learning at the moment of need as opposed to other solutions. The last piece here is, uh, as I mentioned, the capability to build out um, true e-learning courses. So as opposed to creating a knowledge path and having people progress through them in UPK or then you had to record maybe yourself doing an overview presentation, UPerform allows you to um, create these e-learning courses using all of the uh, all of the assets that you've um, put together. So here's an example of some conceptual information. I uh, can toggle through here. I can link in, um, you know, say training guides, any additional business process documentation, much like UPK. Here's some examples of, you know, PowerPoint content that we've brought in here. Videos can be embedded as well. And as we get in here, you'll notice sometimes, like, oh, maybe that picture is a little small. You can actually make those bigger on demand. And you're progressing much like you would, say, in a Captivate course. When you get to a certain point, now you can embed simulation. So here's an example where I would go and I'd view my simulation. And then you can actually have questions and assessments. You can even include, like I mentioned, those assessment simulations right here in the e-learning course. Okay. So I just threw a ton at you really quickly. <laughs> so let's take a moment to recap kind of what I showed you there. As an SME, I used that rapid recorder tool to perform that assigned task to me, which was to capture the self-service topic. I then checked that recording into the database where the author could pick it up, make any associated edits, and check in for review in a dimensional publishing. I showed you how the database can be used to assign um, uh, website context and how topics can be assigned to that publishing queue so you have no loss of productivity. Um, we then took a look at the uh, multiple documentation outputs as well as how content can be embedded into applications and how you can also use it to build e-learning courses.